Hey guys, Rock and Roller for Life here. Uh, I'm back with part two of my CD collection. Uh, sorry it took me so long to get to this. Uh, uh, with part three, I'll get to it a lot quicker. But uh, so you're gonna notice, I'm gonna start back at the top here because I actually just moved around uh, my CDs again. I put all the soundtracks and compilations down there at the bottom. So uh, I'm gonna start back at the top again. I'm just gonna start right back where I left off. So we left off with uh, Danger Danger second album, Screw It. So next I have Dangerous Toys. Uh, this is another hair metal band that kind of arrived late onto the scene. Um, I'm not too big of a fan of this. Uh, I've only listened to it a couple times. Probably won't listen to it that much if I'm being honest. Uh, then we got Deep Purple, Machine Head. I absolutely love this album. I've been meaning to get more Deep Purple, but uh, this is probably their most famous one. It's got Smoke on the Water on it, uh, Highway Star. It's really awesome. Then we're going to completely different territory when it comes to music. Uh, we got John Denver, uh, Poems, Prayers, and Promises. Uh, I'm a, I'm not a huge John Denver fan, but, you know, I appreciate his work. Uh, really mellow songs, uh, really great. So, I mean, he's a decent songwriter. But, uh, yeah, he's got a pleasant voice, actually, so it's just nice to put this on sometimes. I uh, also have uh, his Rocky Mountain High album. I prefer this one if I have to choose between those two. Now we're getting back into some heavy metal. We got Dio, Holy Diver. One of the best uh, debut heavy metal albums of all time. One of the best debut albums of all time, really. Uh, Dio, just a, an amazing singer. Uh, it's been in some really classic heavy metal bands. Rainbow. Um, uh, he even had a stint with Black Sabbath for a little bit. Uh, and then he started his own band. Just an amazing singer. Uh, put together a great uh, host of musicians for this uh, album. It's amazing. And we got the second album, Dio, The Last in Line. Uh, not, it's almost as good as the first. I think it should, it's a little bit of a step down. But, uh, you know, the first one was just awesome. So it's really hard to replicate that again. But The Last in Line is great too. Then I have uh, Dio, Dream Evil. It's a great album as well. A little underrated. A lot of people don't like this one as much, uh, but I do. We got... Uh, Dio, Lock Up the Wolves. This one, well, this is when the band started to go downhill a little bit, I think. Uh, the material wasn't really up to par with their original, uh, with the first two, at least. Uh, yeah, it's a decent album, though. All right, uh, yeah, this is in the wrong place, obviously, but, uh, this is, uh, Journey's, uh, most recent album, Eclipse. Um, you know, Arnell's a great singer. And, I mean, this album's not bad. It just doesn't have much to set it apart from the albums that preceded it. Uh, it's just, it's okay. It's not great. All right, let me move these, actually. Put them down here. All right, so now we're starting on the second row. Let's see. First, we got Def Leppard's debut album, On Through the Night. It's a great album. Def Leppard, Pyromania, my favorite Def Leppard album. It's great. Photograph. Uh, Fullin. Um, just really great. Uh, Def Leppard, Hysteria. I've heard the songs on this album so much. I don't play this one much because I've just heard every single song on it uh, over and over and over again. It's kind of overplayed a bit. It's a, good, it's a great album, though. I mean, you know, it's good. We got Dire Straits debut album. It's really good. Uh, it has their hit um, "Sultans of Swing" on it. It's a great, great song. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good debut album. You know, Dire Straits is one of those bands that, you know, they're pretty good. Um, it's got some great guitar work on it, but I mean, it's not anything revolutionary. Sure, I forgot about this CD actually. Uh, this is Disney Theme Park Classics actually. Yeah, if if you don't know, well, you definitely don't because I've never said. But, uh, yeah, me and my family, we go to uh, Disney World. We, well, we used to go a lot more. We don't really go as much anymore, but we used to. So I just wanted to get this for, like, on the trip over there so we could put it in the car. I don't listen to it much, though. Got Dawkins' debut album. Oh, that's not debut. That's not their debut album, actually. But uh, Under Lock and Key, that's really good. But this one's my favorite Dawkins album. Back for the Attack. That's great. It actually has a song called Dream Warriors. Uh, it was written specifically uh, to be in the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors movie. Uh, so if you've never heard Doc, and you've probably heard that song if you've seen that movie. But if you like that song, there's a whole lot more where that comes from on this album. It's great. Got the Doors debut album. 
I'm not a really big, huge fan of The Doors, uh, but I wanted to at least get their debut album. Um, you know, sometimes I get albums for just their historical significance. Um, I mean, it, I put it on every once in a while, but it's, it's not one of my favorite albums, though. Have Duran Duran, Rio. Uh, it's probably the only album I'm going to get by them. It's got Rio on it. Uh, it's got Hungry Like the Wolf, their biggest hit on it. Uh, I haven't really put it on in a while, but uh, I need to listen to it again. But from what I can remember, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So now we got a whole bunch of Bob Dylan here. We got the freewheeling Bob Dylan. The Times They Are a Changing. Very somber album. Very depressing album, actually. Huh. Got another side of Bob Dylan. Bringing it all back home is when he kind of got into more of a rock, uh, folk rock type sound. It's great. Probably one of his most famous albums here, Highway 61 Revisited. It's got like a Rolling Stone on it. I'll tell you what, this album right here was just panned by the critics. Um, personally, I enjoyed quite a few of the songs on it. I think... You know, as with many double albums, it probably could have been trimmed down to a single album. Uh, it's, it's got some filler on it, obviously. It has some live tracks um, some of some previous material. Like, it has a live uh, version of Like a Rolling Stone on here. Uh, he does a cover of Simon and Garfunkel's The Boxer, which is actually not bad. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it just seems to me like he just gathered a whole bunch of material and, and just threw it on here. Uh, you know, there's, there's some standout tracks on here. But uh, not an amazing album, by any means. Bob Dylan, Planet Waves. Uh, I think this is one of the albums that he did with the band, as the backing band for him. Um, it's got some good stuff on it. It has um, the song Forever Young. It has two versions of that song. It has a fast version and a slow version. Um, but it's pretty good. Then the final one I have is Bob Dylan, Desire. At least in 75, I think. Uh, we got the Eagles, Hotel California. Um, it's the only one I have of theirs, but I do plan on getting more, especially Desperado in their debut. But, I mean, this is just a classic album. I mean, Hotel California is an amazing song. Dang, I forgot I had this. Uh, yeah, I have Billie Eilish's debut album. I listened to it once. I mean, it's actually not terrible. Um, it's not really music that I listen to very often, that type of, that genre. I don't listen to a lot of new music. I'm going to be honest, uh, I stay more in like the 70s and the 80s time frame when it comes to music. But uh, it's not a bad debut album. It's just not something I listen to very much. Um, you know, I think she has talent. And this album's not bad. Just don't listen to it much. We got a whole bunch of ELO. We got Electric Light Orchestra. Uh, it's called No Answer, but it's, that's actually really not what the title is. Uh, it's really just Electric Light Orchestra. It's just, that's what it's called. Uh, but this is great. This is the only album with Roy Wood on it, and uh, this is actually a really underrated album. I think it's actually one of my favorites out of all of them. Um, but a lot of people just uh, go past this period and, sh and skip straight to the more commercial stuff. But uh, this right here is really great progressive rock. And here we got one of the one of the best uh, concept albums of all time, uh, El Dorado. Here, it's great. Uh, definitely recommend this album. If you're going to get one, th this is one of the ones you're definitely going to want to get. It's awesome. Then we have Face the Music. Uh, it's not one of my favorites, but it does have Evil Woman on it. Um, it has Strange Magic on it. It's not bad. But it was whenever they were starting to get into a little more commercial. Which isn't bad. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to bash um, a band for wanting to get a little more commercial. I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta get on the charts somehow, and I understand that you know a lot of times the fans feel cheated, but uh, you know it, it's a good album. And we have my favorite ELO album, a New World Record. And here we go, Electric Light Orchestra, Out of the Blue. This is a double album, as with many double albums. Yeah, I think there's less tracks on here that are filler though. There's a whole lot of good stuff on here. It's got the big hit, Mr. Blue Sky. You know, of course, you know, in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 good. We have Discovery, which is oftentimes called Disco Very because of uh, the fact that Lynn tried to add a whole bunch of dance beats and stuff into this album. I think, personally, that they incorporated the disco sound into their music very well. Um, not one of my favorites, though, because I just listened to it yesterday. 
But this one right here, it's at least one of their best later era albums. This one came out in 81, I believe. It's called Time. It's another concept album. Uh, I actually don't know what the concept is, but I'm assuming the concept's about time. <laughs> uh, here's one of their worst albums, but there's still a little bit to like on it. Uh, Balance of Power. Um, it's all right. Uh, it lost a lot of the strings and stuff and turned into more of just a synthesizer keyboard sound. We've got Europe, The Final Countdown. Man, I've heard that title song so much. I don't listen to this one much anymore. Got one of the best albums of all time, in my opinion. Fleetwood Mac, Rumors. Awesome. You got Dreams on here. Go Your Own Way. The Chain, which was also on the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 soundtrack. Uh, wow, just a classic album. We've got Fleetwood Mac, Mirage. This one's all right. It's a bit of a step down. Uh, this is, you know, th their music just... There's not too many Fleetwood Mac albums that I really love. Uh, I do plan on getting uh, Tusk, and I do plan on getting their self-titled album from 75. I'm not actually, did it come out in 75? I don't know. But I'm going to get, I want those two at least. Because um, when they first started out, they were a really blues-based uh, band. But then they turned into more of like a folky sound whenever uh, 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 Stevie Nicks joined. Then we've got Greta Van Fleet, From the Fires. This is their double EP. Um, personally, I love Greta Van Fleet. Um, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he does sound, uh, Josh does sound a lot like, uh, Robert Plant, but you can't, see, here's the problem, you can't bash a band for sounding a whole lot like another one. First of all, rock's kind of almost dying right now. I mean, we need a, re kind of like a resurgence, and what better way than to channel one of the best heavy metal bands of all time in Led Zeppelin? So, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. And the people that do, um... Honestly, just need to get over it. And why don't you just listen to the music? It's great music. I mean, everybody always finds something to complain about. We've got Guns N' Roses debut, Appetite for Destruction. It's awesome. Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion 1. Of course, November Rain's on here. Awesome. Uh, Coma is an awesome song on here. Um, don't Cry is really good. Dust and Bones, I think, is a really underrated track on here. Right Next Door to Hell is a really great way to start it off. It's great. It's got a little bit of filler on it, but it's good. Uh, we got, we got Daryl Hall and John Oates, Private Eyes. Love this one. I'm um, actually getting another uh, Hall and Oates CD soon from Amazon. Of course, Amazon's having a little bit of a hard time, you know, getting stuff out quick, which is fine, you know, I understand. But I'm going to be getting their Man Eater album, so I'll do like an update whenever I get all the CDs in that I've ordered. We've got George Harrison's solo album, Cloud Nine. Love this. Uh, Jeff Lynn actually uh, produced this album. Uh, this, of course, you know, Jeff Lynn and George Harrison were part of the Traveling Wilburys in the late 80s. Uh, and uh, tragically, Roy Orbison passed away, and that kind of cut that cut that uh, super group short. But uh, just a great album. I, I really enjoy George. George Harrison is actually my favorite Beatle. Um, and I do plan on getting more of his solo work, definitely. We got Heart, Little Queen. I really have, I only listened to this one like once all the way through. It's got Barracuda on it. Um, there's some harder rocking songs. There's some more folky songs on it. I really like the cover, though. We got Halloween, Keeper of the Seven Keys, Part 1. This is kind of like a, a speed metal album. It's really great. Uh, I plan on getting Part 2 sometime. But I definitely recommend this if you're a fan of speed metal or just heavy metal in general. Halloween's a great band. Um, their debut is also really great. And I just picked this one up recently. This is uh, Iggy, Iggy and the Stooges, Raw Power. This is awesome. This is like a proto-punk album. Really set the foundation for a lot of punk, the punk sound. But wow, I mean, this album blew me away, actually. I've listened to it like four times since I've gotten it. And I plan on listening to it in a whole lot more. It's awesome. So now we're getting, this is one of my favorite bands of all time, and I'm going to get more of their work. Um, got Iron Maiden debut with Paul Diano on vocals. More of a punky sound to them. Um, they still haven't refined their sound yet, but it's a great debut album. It's got great songs on it. We got my favorite one, The Number of the Beast. Uh, the first album with Bruce Dickinson on vocals. Amazing. One of the best vocalists of all time. Uh, 
it's got great i mean it ends with hollowed be thy name i mean that's just a it's an awesome name for a song but i mean they really deliver on that album i'm on that song really really well they deliver on the whole album it's amazing this is where they really started to refine their sound uh peace of mind just as good as number of the beast power slave is not my favorite but a lot of people's favorite uh and i can see why i mean they fully completed their sound on this one i mean this one is awesome got somewhere in time when they started to add synthesizers into their sound but i think they integrated it really well of course it's got like a futuristic uh theme to it so the synthesizers actually added a whole lot of a uh, uh, new element to it joan jett's debut album bad reputation really great very underrated i think uh, Billy Joel, The Stranger. Billy Joel, Glass Houses from 1980, when he uh, went a little. This this is a very hard rocking album uh, compared to, especially compared to the to The Stranger. It's got great stuff on it. Starts off with You May Be Right. Uh, it's still rock and roll to me. Um, like uh, All for Le Lena is really great. We have an Innocent Man. Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, one of the best uh, double albums of all time. Amazing. Elton John, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Uh, this is kind of like an autobiographical album. Um, tells a little bit of uh, the story of both uh, Elton John and Bernie Taupin rising, rising up to the top of the music world. Uh, it's really awesome. And here we got a whole lot of Journey. It's also one of my favorite bands of all time. We got Journey's debut album, very underrated. Journey, Look Into the Future. See, these two albums were before Steve Perry joined into the band. And then here's the first album with Steve Perry on vocals Infinity. Awesome. My favorite Journey album. We got Evolution. It has a big hit off of this one, was uh, Lovin', Touchin', Squeezin'. We have. Departure. Uh, Any Way You Want It is the big song off this one. Then we got almost everybody knows this album. Journey Escape. It starts off with Don't Stop Believing. Uh, it's got Who's Crying Now. Uh, Stone in Love. It's just awesome. Open Arms. Wow. Then I also have the live where, where they did the Escape Tour uh, in Houston 1981. It's a great live album. A great live band. We got Frontiers, big songs off of here. Faithfully starts off with the amazing Separate Ways. We got Raised on Radio. Uh, don't listen to this one very much. Uh, Girl Can't Help It's a really good song off this one, though. Then we got whenever uh, Steve Augeri, I think that's his name, uh, but he sounded, all, he sounded quite a bit like Steve Perry. He just didn't have as much um, oomph in his voice. Uh, not not as good of a singer, but still pretty good. Then we've got uh, Judas Priest, Stained Class. Judas Priest, Killing Machine. British Steel, amazing. Point of Entry. And actually, I'm listening to, uh, I do have Screaming for Vengeance, but I was actually listening to that just a little bit ago. So it's not in here right now. It's over there, but uh, got Kansas Point of No Return. It's great prog rock. Uh, Carol King Tapestry. And we got a whole bunch of Kiss albums here. I got the debut from Kiss. Has I mean you know it's amazing they came out with so many songs that are actually still staples. Um, you got Strutter, Deuce, Cold Gin. I mean it's awesome. Nothing to lose. Which is great. Black Diamond ends it. Love Black Diamond. Uh, Kiss Alive uh, really uh, set the foundation for uh, for live records. Uh, one of the best live albums of all time for sure. Because you know Kiss is really a live band. That's where they sh that's where they thrive. You know they thrive by they they actually want to put on a show. They don't just want to play great music for you. They also want to provide you with a spectacle. You know with pyrotechnics and fire and Gene Simmons with the blood and everything. It's great. Kiss Destroyer. 
Kiss, Rock and Roll Over. Kiss, Love Gun. One of my favorite Kiss albums for sure. Since we're uh, since I have a whole lot more Kiss, I'm gonna go ahead and finish Kiss, and then I shall end this uh, this episode. Uh, so then we got Kiss Dynasty. Uh, you know, they, they adapted a little bit of a disco-type sound. Uh, really divided a lot of their fans. But personally, I really enjoy this album. I think it has great riffs on it, actually. I mean, it's not... You know, if you can look past, you know, like the... You know, I Was Made For Love And You is definitely more of a disco-influenced song. But there's some great stuff on here, actually. Uh, I love uh, their cover of uh, 2000, 2000 Man by the Rolling Stones. With Ace Fraley on vocals. It's really great. Got Creatures of the Night here, the first album uh, with Eric Carr on drums. Uh, Eric Carr is probably one of my favorite drummers of all time. Uh, you know, rest in peace. He died in like uh, 91 or 92, sadly. But he's an amazing drummer. Added a whole new element to their sound. It's great. This is a very heavy album. Then we got kind of more in their hair metal slash glam metal phase. You got Kiss, Lick It Up. Uh, the only album that... Well, actually, I think Vinnie Vincent played a little bit on Creatures of the Night as well, but the the only album where he's actually really credited for playing every single song on here is uh, Lick It Up, where they took the makeup off, tried to get back to the mainstream. It did work. Then we got the only album uh, with Mark St. John. Mark St. John came in to replace Vinnie Vincent on guitar, uh, but the only album with him on it, it's an okay album. It's not great. It's got uh, Heavens on Fire on it, though. Then we got Kiss Asylum. This uh, has Bruce Kulick on uh, on uh, on lead guitar. It's got some great stuff on it. It's got the big hit "Tears Are Falling" that uh, Paul Stanley wrote. Um, starts off with "King of the Mountains," pretty good. Uh, "Who Wants to Be Lonely" is really good. Then we got "Hot in the Shade." Uh, this is the last album that um, Eric Carr fully played on. Uh, it has. The only song that he actually provided lead vocals for in Little Caesar. Um, it's got some good stuff on it. It's not great, but it's good. Got Kiss Revenge. Uh, this is where Eric Singer came in uh, to play guitar. I mean, play guitar. Uh, came in on drums. And he is actually still playing drums for them. On their uh, final tour they're doing. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for uh, part two. This one went... Uh, quite a bit longer than the last one but uh guys thanks for watching uh, i'll get part three to you uh a lot sooner than i got part two to you sorry about that um but uh thanks for watching guys uh stay tuned for the rest if you uh, like the video uh, you know com comment down um in this uh comment down below and tell me if there's any uh, videos you'd like to see me do or uh if you have any of these albums and which one of these albums is your favorite but uh I'll catch you guys later.